knighted and named to the King's Guard in his 16th year. At the sack of King's Landing, murdered his king, Ares II. Oh my god. Pardoned by Robert Baratheon. Of course pardoned by him. Thereafter known as the Kingslayer. It's the duty of the Lord Commander to fill those pages. And there's still room left of mine. Mm. Why is Brienne still here? Like, shouldn't she go back? She can't go back to where? To her hometown. To her, to her dad. It's yours. What? I can't accept it. Will you be forced to dark sword? You use it to defend Ned Stark's daughter. He swore an oath to return the Stark girls to their mother. Lady Stark's dead. Gaia's probably dead too, but there's still a chance to find Sansa and get her somewhere safe. I've got something else for you. Oh, He's doing the exact opposite her. of Cersei said. I love this. He gave her a Valerian the steel Lady sword Captain. to protect Sansa. Met from Ned Stark's sword to protect his daughter. Woo! F for you. F for you, aw. Man, Jamie is. Jamie, I think he's getting out oh, of the first one. You'll be keeping him from heart. The chivalry. I won't slow you down, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Padre. <Good> lady. <laughs> I promise I'll serve you well. See? He's a good lad. He'll pass along. Oh, my God. What are you waiting for? A kiss? <laughs> Ready the lady's horse. Uh, Say the best sorts of names. Any ideas? Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Oathkeeper. Oh. Classy. He's relevant too. I think you like that. I actually don't want to believe I like their dynamics so much. Jamie right now, like, I'm never have taken her away. Jamie. Remember when you disobeyed orders and rode south to help Rob? And I remember who came after me and brought me home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> I know how hard it is, Sam, believe me. Yeah, I need a friend like John. When you told me about <laughs> Bran going beyond the wall, all I could think about was getting my strength back so I could go and find him. And he was betrayed by his own men, stabbed in the back by cowards. Mm. He deserved far better. That fucking guy all we himself. can give him now. Is justice. Who will join me? Oh, so his Obviously, boys, yeah. his boys are gonna be. Yeah, all three of them are obviously going. There you go. I, I love his boy from the Boy, look at I like how the music changed when, when he stood up. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't that. Can't let a recruit come north of the wall. And let me say my vows. If it's a fight you're heading for, then you need men who know how. Oh, I just got it. Thank you, brothers. I just got it while he's here. Remember, Bolton was like flying me bread, and the, the brothers were still alive? And they're near this place. That's why he's there. And I'll just realize that okay. it didn't hit me. Okay. It, it made sense when like Bran's around here. Drinking wine from the skull of Geor. Fucking Mormon. What? That's the commander guy's uh, skull? Any command for us? Lord Commander. He's actually What's drinking that? the skull. <laughs> You thirsty? Who 
was better with this one. He's hurt. They've caught him in a trap. Who? I didn't see, but they have my brother's wolf. They have ghosts. Oh, is that John's? Uh, is that John's? I don't know. If I'm not back soon, we'll meet a... Ah, Hold on. single baby that that the, the, the crosser guy sacrifices they take them and like turn them to one, one, one of them so then they can so was that the guy like the, the guy doing it like oh. is he the only guy who would do it he like, was one of those people like, like, like they, I don't know they like surrounded a lot of people like a lot of the white walkers and apparently like one of them just popped up like Guys, the White Walkers, they are they're they're taking babies. They're taking babies and converting them into one of them. Converting them. <laughs> <laughs> Convert this file to White Walker. <laughs> X. I'm free three to <laughs> DLC. Holy um, shit! So yeah. So okay. So so we finally know what happens to these babies. Like we know the Craster guy sacrifices them. <clears throat> so he puts the babies in wherever. I, the this whole time I thought they just eat them. 
to well, keep them away. That's the, like the maybe maybe yeah we didn't really know what to do, but like t- I think towards the end of the episode they showed uh, the, like the process of like what happens after you know the babies like when he's picked up and like he's taking. So okay, first of all, where is this location? I think it's beyond the wall. Is I think it's like way beyond the wall. Like north, north, the, north, north, north. Like okay, yeah, so, yeah, it is beyond the wall, obviously, yeah. because the wall is it's built for the White Walkers. Yeah. But okay, so. They've taken the so they take this sort of so apparently one of the guys one of the White Walkers takes the baby to this place like a White Walker cult like place I think it's way beyond the wall and then we saw like multiple like headquarters yeah like they seem like the White Walkers they seem intellectual like they seem like intellect like they I don't seem like this kind of monster that just like, like mindless like, zombies no like they, they seem intellectual they seem like you know they could process like how to um like they have a thought process basically you know so like they take the baby. They put it in, uh, they put it on this, uh, like, pillar kind of, kind of thing. It seems like a ritual, again, like, it's just, you With know. things in there. And, 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 and then yeah. we have this other White Walker guy. Like, I don't think it was the same guy who picked him up. I think it was somebody else. I don't know if he's a leader or not. And then he just basically just touches, touches the, the baby. baby and the eyes are just, bam. He turns into a White Walker. So. <laughs> Why? Like, like, uh, the obvious thing is obviously they they they're trying to like to raise their army to raise the army somehow like they but like I'm just sure because like do they have like uh like do they have like an established leader like the White Walkers do they have somebody that that they that they view as a leader you know that they follow I think so like I would I would like, like do they have a disciplined army in a sense do they have disciplined like White Walker soldiers. Like how does the whole thing do? What's like what's the White Walker motive? Does you like convert everybody to White Walkers? Like take over? Is it like the typical motive of just take over everything? So like all these questions, you know, like about the White Walkers, their origin. Like yeah, their origin. Like what what how like how well, who was the first White Walker? You know, like like I'm just, I don't know. This is all these curious questions, but like it was, it was nice to see that finally okay, what the fuck happens to the baby? So like, does a it, does a baby remain a baby, and does it, does it grow does up? Does it grow up to be like like like? It, I it, would it, assume so. I think a, an army baby. Like, it, it's kind like, of, are the kind of productive? Are the White Walkers like they're dead? Are they like alive or are they dead? Like human sense of dead? Like is a baby like does it not need nutrition, milk, all the things like that zombies pretty much? They, like a, like a, just you know the sustenance to live. Like does it not require that anymore since it's a White Walker? Maybe. Do they not require like all these questions? Like I'm just curious, like what happens to the baby now, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so the episode started off with uh, Grey Worm. He's learning English, so, and, and 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 the translator girl. I don't don't know her name yet. I don't know if it was told or not, but we'll catch on to it. But she. Um, so like the comments, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so 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 Daenerys was like she sent the the translator to teach Grey Worm like uh, I think how to speak English basically. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, they seem to like uh, be connecting on an emotional level. Like sparks are. <laughs> you think sparks like, are? Like, you know. Like they're talking about their past. Like uh, she was like sort of encouraging him. She's like, no, you know, you, you like you will go back to the city. This and that. You know, like you can forget your past and stuff. But like it was first time you're seeing some personality out of uh, the translator, like she was actually like instead of I mean, just like translating and be like yeah, this is my job, you see like a different yeah, yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing a more like you know a personal side of her instead of more of her profession. That's like, more like <laughs> the I guess so. Yeah, so that was nice to see. But man, like so they provided all these weapons to uh, the people in that in that city, and uh, and the slaves would be there having a discussion within themselves. They're like, I don't think. Or you know, it's the one guy's like, we could do it. You know, Daenerys is gonna, she could protect us. Yeah, and then Grey Grey Worm pretty much said, you can't if you can't. He infiltrated. You, you can't free the slaves. You must fight for your freedom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which, which that, is why that, they that, gave very, that was very like it was a very impactful line in a sense. Like he's just like you gotta basically you know your cliche of you you know if you want it you gotta really fight for it. Yeah, because they had remember they had the idea like you can't just free us. Mm-hmm. You know, we're slaves. We're slaves, yeah. And then he's like, no, you're right. And that's why they gave him the sword. Mm-hmm. The swords. I think, yeah. I think, yeah, I, th- I think the swords were like, when he provided like weapons, he's like, like, it's sort of like... I'm not gonna do it for you. You have to work with me. <laughs> well, no, it's, 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 not, well, it's not even that. It's just like, yeah, I guess sort of like, you know, fight for your freedom. But also when they saw so much swords and stuff and like, you know, Grey Worm telling... I, no, Grey Worm's a perfect living example. I Oh, he said this really nice line. So it's like, one day of freedom beats like a fucking eternity of a life slavery, slavery, you know? Yeah. 
Like I think I think him being an actual slave that's able to relate with the yeah, slaves. Yeah, yeah. Like it really, so it really to like it. you know got them going. They're like, holy shit, we could like we could we could be him. And they provide the weapons. Like you know what, fuck it, let's just go, let's go all in. Let's, let's you know, let's kill these fucking bastards, <laughs> which they did. And then okay, so Felicity now she took over the city, and she has a new title now. She breaker of chains. Yeah, but Breaker Mother of Dragons, we all knew that. Mother Felicity, of Dragons, Breaker of Chains. Not Breaker then, of Chains. Yeah, and she has like that, you know, the typical first of your name kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, but like, uh, Sir Barristan had a little, um, he's like, so he, he was kind of concerned. He's like, you know, sometimes you should, you know, like, you know, unjust uh, behavior from the past should be dealt with with mercy because these are your people that are viewing you. But she's like, I'm gonna, like, he was concerned in a sense. And she was like, he, she was like, I'm gonna, you know, injustice will be treated with justice. And then, you know, 163 girls or children were, like, you know, crucified for every one mile, remember? And then she's just like, I'm going to do the same with these masters. And then she's like, like, fucking nailing them into this, you know, all those things. So, like, it's I, like... I, okay, look, I agree, uh, but I disagree at the same time, hmm. you know? I agree because obviously they deserve it. They kill children, they're just messed up. Okay, that's number one. Yeah, number two, like, but, like, you know? if you're going to free the slaves, you don't want them to, to view their new master... As, as the same the, as, as the old one. As the old one. So what's the like, point of the freedom? Like I know, I know she's doing it to the masters for revenge, but, but like it's it's just like, like you know, like I I don't know, like you're pretty much doing the same thing as what they did, and like the you know like the people that are freed now, they're gonna view you, as a person capable, but and as doing the same thing as what the masters. At did. the same time, it's kind of satisfying to see those guys on the crosses from the slaves' perspective. Yeah, yeah, for, exactly. It goes both ways, honestly. Like I, like you know, Sir Barrison had a he had a more better he had, his approach was more like you know show mercy, but like these these masters like do they deserve mercy? I don't know, you know, because I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's it's, a, it's just one of those those those. <laughs> normal debates that you have in life, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's all the same. What you would, like, everybody has different <laughs> philosophies, but you know, she chose her philosophy, and it was uh, pretty darn. Um, I agree with you. <laughs> um, and then okay, so Jamie and uh, Braun are training. <laughs> Jamie's getting better. Braun's yeah. still up to his dirty ways. He yeah. took his hand off and snapped him. <laughs> so that was uh, that was fun to see. And then and then uh, and then Braun was telling uh, Jamie, he's just like, hey. Uh, you, you you know the first you know how I met your brother you know the whole trial by combat thing yeah but you know you were the first name like thousands of miles away you were the first guy Jamie like his brother he was the first guy he named in his uh, defense to be his champion because he knew he would come exactly he exactly he knew he was gonna come so like like I, I like the fact Brown was like vouching for Tyrion because Brown see uh, Brown Brown <laughs> Brown seems like uh, he seems like a ty- type of guy you gotta pay for any type of service. So like, he was doing it out of like he was just really genuine about it. So I really like seeing that about Bronn. Yeah, and then and then, and then and then it worked. Jamie met uh, Tyrion. Like the, like the scene later. Like this, uh, exactly. <laughs> the next scene is like Jamie's like fuck it, you know, I'm meeting brother. Fuck and even and Cersei. And even that conversation that that he had with Tyrion, Jamie and Tyrion. I really like that. It's just like I've never. I think that was the first time I've seen them actually talk to each other. And like in a brother, brother to brother, like it was, it was such like genuine. A, it was genuine. It was so genuinely like you could relate. You could see that they're brothers. Like he's like the way they talked and stuff. You know, he's like, oh, we're the King Slayer brothers. I mean, that, that has a nice ring to it. And then, and then he's like, he's like, I didn't kill your your son. You know, at this point, I think everybody knows his their son, Cersei and Jamie. He's like, you know, and then Jamie's like, and she's like, why would he ask me to kill you? You know, you think I would actually kill my own brother? Why would he ask that? So like, I, I, I like, I, I love their conversation they had. Um, it was real. It was real. It was real. It was, it was, that's why we like I, I, I love Jamie and Tyrion conversations. Like, two very, like, funny yeah, like Tyr- guys having conversations. I like <laughs> Tyrion with any person conversation, but especially, like, Tyrion with Jamie, and Jamie. It's, it's just like, like, it's like a, it's like a... Different dimension, pretty exactly. much. Exactly. <laughs> Littlefinger uh, and Sansa. So I heard Littlef- to the eerie. So okay, it is official. We know now who killed officially who killed. I think we knew, but like we know now, uh, Littlefinger and the Tyrells have partnered up to kill Joffrey. Get is uh, yeah, that's, like a lot of, that's a lot off my shoulder. You know? <laughs> I guess I finally know. You know They're like, still not off the high of Joffrey's death, so. <laughs> so. So like he was talking to Sansa. He was telling. He was like he's sort of schooling her in a sense. He's like. You know, uh, you gotta be a risk taker. If people don't know your motive, they don't expect nothing from you. 
I had friends here. The moment they're they're not reliable anymore, I'm moving on to more reliable, stable, and predictable friends. Which sounds like a dick move, but in King's Landing, it's just no, man. That sounds like a brilliant move, to be honest. Yeah. Like, uh, Littlefinger's a piece of shit. Let's just let's just get that straight. Wow. He's a piece of shit well, for sure. But but his planning, his intellect, it's just it, far beyond. It's like... it's amazing. Like he, like you can hate this guy, and we do. Because he's a snake, but like he's not, he's not trustworthy. But then he's doing whatever it takes to be, to get the <coughs> job done. He is single handedly. He is fucking like he's orchestrating the whole uh, Game of Thrones in a sense, like by killing Joffrey. He's like the political, uh, the political like the uh, notion of like the, you know this show. It's like literally he's 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 a huge he's, he's like a, ma- he's a mastermind he's, behind. He's him. a mastermind exactly like. And he's a nobody. He, he's not no Stark. Or he's not no Lannister. He's, you know, he's just he's just he's it a gets, little finger. It gets you to think, even like if we, in perspective like, in our world. Yeah, it's you just know, like, we expect that the big guys, like the the, the parliament, for example, yeah, or just, the government, they're all in power. But I guess that you did, like maybe it's just someone that you don't think about, like pulling the strings in a sense. Like you, you never know, you know. So Littlefinger is really doing that. I think, like. I don't know, like uh, him and Varys, uh, Varys as well started from nothing. So like, I, I remember they always had this conversation yeah. between them. Yeah. What's the realm? What's this? What's that? So like, <coughs> uh, those two are very interesting characters. Um, Marjorie's, uh, you know, she took her advi- advice from her grandma, who was very good. She was, uh, as she said, I was good. I was very good. <laughs> and she was like, but she's like, you're better. You know, so, so go, so go to yeah. Joffrey's uh, little brother before Cersei does. <laughs> and like, and, you know, oh, yeah. show him. And then Marjorie, she's really good at being like manipulative. Like the way she just fucking went up to him. She's just like, that's going to be our little secret. I guess, I guess. He just bought out. It's that. funny. It's like, I, I thought his name was Sir Pounce. Sir <laughs> Well, it was the cat the whole time. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, my notes. I'm like cross that out. Wow. So I, I think, and then we also know like Joffrey's little brother. It, it, he's nothing like Joffrey. He's just a really sweet, innocent. Like, he's a good kid. He, he's good. He's a good kid. He's a good kid, basically. Mm-hmm. So back we, at uh, the Night's Watch, uh, Alistair is, is still beefing with John. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, what's your problem? I hate John so much. I, I like I like how Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> he got the worst fucking character to be the same name oh as you. God. Is there any character named Visor by any chance? Because I, 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 he's probably a beast or something. He's like, there's gonna be a character named Visor who's gonna win Game of Thrones. He's probably an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so yeah, so back at the wall, yo, the Bolton spy. We got we got his name Loki, Loki, Lock, Lock, Lock. Lock. Yeah. Look, he's he's Loki. Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, guys, uh, we are watching from this episode on. We are watching it with subtitles, so like it's gonna. This is, it's, it's a lot easier it helps for us. So much to like get down names, some some things, some accents we don't understand. So like it really helps. Like you know, with the, with the subtitles, like it's, it showed us, it shows us like okay, what's going on? Like amazing subtitles. So like I feel like it's really helping us. It's like, because like, of subtitles. I actually, I'm now I'm starting to remember people's names, people's names and stuff. So like it, it's I don't know, it's just, it's just like a. A little update here. We have subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so uh, Locke, we come a long way, huh? Locke is a bolt, the uh, Bolton fucking guy who was. Uh, remember, he chopped up Jamie's hand. That guy, uh, he is. He's acting like you know, like buddy to buddy with Jon Snow. And at first, I, at first when I first saw him, I'm just like, he looks familiar. He looks familiar. I'm like, is there is his twin brother work at the Night's Watch and him over there? But we figured it out. I he figured it out. I figured it out. Halfway through, I'm just like, <laughs> it made sense because Bolton, the uh, Bruce Bolton, I think his name is, he realized that uh, I think Theon told him that Bran and uh, Recon are alive and they want the Starks, obviously, because the you know they're still if if people find out like they're gonna march behind them and then uh, take the Boltons out because you know they're like uh, warden of the North, I, I I think. So anyway, so this guy knows that Bran <laughs> is up north. I think that Theon told him. So he joined the fucking yeah. Night's Watch, and that's why he's teaming up with fucking John. Because John is going to that Craster's place with the fucked up people over there, and Bran is is like Bran is like you know on the it's nearby, so like he he gets a chance he could he could take him alive. I think he'll just kill him most likely. So like it, it's 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 making sense now, you know, in a sense. Yeah, it's all coming together. It's yeah. And then we had Jamie and Brienne. Okay, they, I, I want. I want to talk about. I, yeah, I yeah. seriously want to talk about this. They parted ways. I, okay, they parted the ways. Okay, look, I like the irony in this. 
You know how Jamie gave Brienne uh, the Valerian steel sword mm -hmm. from Ned's. Yeah. That sword. Listen, listen. That sword is sworn to protect Sansa if Brienne finds Sansa, mm -hmm. right? And they call it the Oath Keeper. She named it. She named it. She named it. She named it the Oath, Oath, Keeper. It the Oath Keeper. Yeah. It's funny. I, I like it because Ned Ned Stark mm -hmm. is known as a guy. Well, he's a, he was he was a realist guy. Yeah, he kept his word. He kept his, honorable guy. Yeah. He, he's an honorable guy. He keeps his oath. So the the fact that he keeps his oath and the sword is from his sword. So it's called the Oath Keeper, and it's to protect Sansa. Basically, yeah. You know? So it's like, and no, a, I, it's I, karma I, in a different way. I I, I liked I liked I, like I didn't expect like Jamie like we had a conversation between uh, Jamie and Cersei where Cersei was like uh, that bitch Sansa I want to kill her and this and that, you know, and then. Um, He's like, nope. And, no, no, he's like, <laughs> find her and kill her. And he, he didn't really respond to give her an answer, but like, he went to Brienne, who, who Cersei refers to as a cow. He went to her, gave her a Valerian steel fucking sword. Like, a Valerian steel sword. You don't get that anywhere. You <laughs> yeah, know? you don't get that anywhere, yeah. And then he gave it to her and told her to vow to protect Sansa with this sword that belonged to Ned Stark. And then let her off. Like, it's just so, like Wood Podrick. <laughs> Wood Podrick, you know? For, I mean, he, pull, he pulled in for Tyrion as well. He's like, you know, for Podrick's life in danger here. So, like, you know, you go off and then I don't think Brian. I, I like how they, I like how he's like, sir. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I love Podrick, man. I fucking love Podrick. So, like, you know, Jamie, so, like, man, Jamie, I, oh my god, like, he's just, he's just so fucking. He's winning. He, I think he won me over at this point. Okay. The guy, I like, I like him so much. Like, I hated him at first. Obviously, we all hate like, him. I did like, not expect him to give her the sword and like, you know. Like, I think he's he's getting out of Cersei's influence. You know, like I actually, I'm, I'm liking this. Like he's not listening to Cersei's uh, bitch motive. Is like, I think starting to realize. I, I I really think that one year he spent being captured. You know, this is surrounded by Stark's forces, and then Brienne, and then you know the Brienne journey that they had, mm -hmm. and then the, you know him, his hand getting chopped off, like, and then you know him saving her with a bear, like all, all these like this timeline of of events that happened. It could it really change again. It, 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 it's a life changing uh, like uh, like experience that he went through, you know, and like we're seeing like uh, we're seeing like the effects of like the, the the whole product of that experience right now. Jamie, like I think. He took a while. Like he's 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 just, he's literally a one eighty degree change in his personality, and like I really like the fact he's he's getting out of Cersei's little you know influential bubble that he's always in. Yeah. Um. Then we go. To Brand, and then finally, Brand got caught. Brand caught. <coughs> that fucking weird guy who's like I'm I'm the shit. You know I was a shit back in King's Landing. You know, and, then, and it was so fucking gross to see. I hate those guys. The guys are like, you know, I, that, I used that, to that, be like this. That guy know? with the beard who bullies Sam, like the way he was just like, he was just on that woman, and he's just like doing gross shit. It was just, I felt so fucking weird watching that. Like I felt like it was like yeah, that that like, pit in your stomach. Like, it's just like it's, uh, it's just he 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 just looks the part of a of a disgusting perverted fucking guy, and then the, the way he was just like those innocent women. You know, as if they didn't see enough, they went through enough of that fucking old Chris, you guys, and fucking nothing, you know, getting babies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, is this, I guess, the whole group is just full of fucking dirtbags. You know, it's just fucking dirtbags. Like, that fucking guy, they took that commander guy who they killed his skull and was drinking wine off it. Uh, like, geez, uh, that was disgusting. That was absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Now they caught Bran. Bran and his whole group are caught. And um, he was he was like he was like fucking uh, I'm Brad harassing Allen. that girl, the curly haired girl. Yeah, uh, until he Reed's sister, and then I still find it like he had he I know he had to like say who he was, but like I still kind of think it was a little too early for him to say I'm Brad from Winterfell. I, like he's straight up like I, I like you never know you, you, like I don't know, I, like I guess if you're in his perspective like you never know what this guy could pull. Yeah, I guess he might as well like earlier than than later, right? What if he pulls a knife or does some damage? And then, and then the Jojen Reed was like, he was like, you know, having a vision and stuff. So like, I think that that moment really just like, oh shit, you know, I'm I'm star, I'm Brand Star, you know, yeah. calm the fuck down. So, you know, all in all, this was a, a good episode. This was a really good episode. I like the episode a lot. Uh, I'm lo I'm loving the season so far, man. And we're like, I think uh, we're, we're still in the first half, and a right. lot of good stuff. Are a lot happening. of good stuff. Just imagine like the other half of this. So, God. you know, tune in for the next one. <laughs>
MVP. Let's see. Okay, we have a. Okay, we got we got we got a lot of. This is gonna candidates. be hard. This is gonna be hard, but not just not because we don't have any candidates, because we have a lot of candidates. Yeah. Okay. So this is gonna be a big one. Okay, I'm gonna go by. Let's see. It's, number one is Jamie. Jamie, that's easy. Because yeah. he, he, you know, he was doing some. Yeah. He was doing some work. Um, we also have Grey Worm. Grey Worm as well. His, his thing with the slaves. The slaves and stuff. Like he orchestrated the whole uh, rebellion against the master. So there's always. And it went by like. Pretty smooth. Well. Yeah. It went smooth like. She, she, like, Grey Worm did it, you know? Yeah. She took it over the city. I also want to give it to Marjorie, though. There's also Marjorie, Because, yes. like, she took, okay, look, she took her grandma's advice. And she, yeah, she went straight to it. And she went straight to it. And, and, and obviously, like, we already know she was manipulated when she was with Joffrey. But she's but, doing a hell of a good job on, like, yeah, Joffrey herself was, like, she was able to manipulate that cycle, right? Yeah, and if you're like, able to manipulate Joffrey, like, what his, about this kid who's all nice and It was all nice from the start, right? And she's, you know, like... Who could it be from these three? Like, okay, Jamie, well, we didn't discuss why Jamie could be the uh, MVP. I just like him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, Jamie, uh, MVP in a sense, uh, he gave, he got Podrick out, you know, he gave uh, Brienne the Valerian steel and to, armor to, to protect Sansa. Yeah. So, like, you know, I, like, I don't know, uh, if you think about uh, Jamie's, like, like, I like what he's doing, like, he gave her a steel, this and that, but, like, He's having that impact. He talked to Tyrion as well. But, like, you got you got to compare relative to, like, Grey Worms or Marjorie's. Okay, so, like, okay, so, so Jamie, yeah. essentially, okay, he, he let he let Podrick and Brienne go with the Valerian Steel to find Sansa. Yeah. He's impacting, we, like, he, he did, he, okay, he does have an impact, but, like, we don't know the extent of it yet. Like, episode-wise, it was good to see, but, like, I don't know if it's good enough. Okay, to okay, TV, yeah, you know? you're right, you're right. I agree. Marjorie's impact. She's manipulating Joffrey's little brother. The new king, yeah. But we don't know if he's... Oh, we know he's getting manipulated. But we don't know the end result of it. Are they, they, they didn't get married yet. You know, Cersei doesn't know anything. Like, we, we, don't, we still don't know if it... Like, just, this is just the start of it. You know? But if you look at real clear impact, Grey Worm, you know, he had clear impact in this episode-wise. He was... He infiltrated... His words itself motivated, and he provided the weapons, and the re- the re- rebellion no, against the masters was, was just flawless. It's smooth. All the masters are done. And are we are we giving it to Grey Worm? I'm giving it to Grey Worm. Yeah, man. I was like, I was thinking Marjorie like, more, but like not that really. You, no, no, no I, I'm gonna go with Grey Worm. I, right. I I just feel like we had like the, the impact was huge on what Grey Worm did, man. Like like the influence he had over the slaves, you know. I, I, you, know, you guys, you guys, let us know if 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 you agree. It's, with this, it's you hard know? to say. This but is, this, I'm this, to yeah, this is our breakdown of this. So you know what, Grey Worm will be our MVP for today. You made us believe. Put clothes on our backs. You sacrificed for us. <laughs> you the real MVP. All right, guys, who's gonna be the flop of this episode? Everybody do the flop. Easy. It's gonna be Joffrey. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> fuck. It was, our life was so easy when he was there. Where's, well, why wasn't Theon in this episode? Listen, just get, just get over it, man. Just, fuck. Okay, um, flop. We had the Masters, you know, we had the Masters, the flop. But like, okay, like, Masters, the flop, sure, but um, we, we, we want like more like, more like characters that are like... Related characters, like, I guess. Like, more like relevant characters. Yeah. And, and then the most relevant character group that... Um, Flopped was uh, Brand's group. Brand's group, yeah. Hey, I like it's not even Brand's group. I would give it to me. me like Bran was, he wanted uh, uh, the wolf. He wanted Summer, I think. Summer uh, was his name, yeah. And he didn't want to leave. And then the the, the curly uh, Georgian Reed sister. I don't know her name yet, but she was like, let's <coughs> leave. These people are not the nice watch. But Bran insisted, and like, I, I it's because of Bran that got into this. Uh, they're the, in this situation right now, in yeah. a sense. You know? I get Bran. Uh, I know, I know he wants to walk, but, like, thing, guess, but like, it's like the signs were there. Maybe you should have taken more of a better approach in like trying to like free your your dire wolf. But now you're stuck with these God knows these freaking people who yeah. are like you know, just they're so unpredictable what they're gonna do. Like literally, they're, like, they're, they're winning it. They're, yeah, they're mental. So on the so anyways, you know, brands he put he put them in the in a situation that's not too good looking too good for them. So. Brand will be the flop of this. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in for today's episode. Hope you guys tune in for our next one. And guys, again, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Alistair Advisor, and see you tomorrow.